Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, in this week's episode, what are we going to be talking about? It's the Lynn Sondek LP12 Magic, or Magic LP12, with a J and a K. Yes, okay, so, as Lynn love their, yes, particularly their Ks. They, they do. And yeah. always have, always yeah. have. Um, interesting, so, I mean, the LP12 is still going, I guess would be my first, my first port of call, and probably as strong as it's ever been, dare I say. Yeah, so, I mean, we are both... Well, I, I'm, I don't have an LP12 anymore, but um, you do. I you're do, a, yeah. You're yeah. A, um, a, a regular... I've had mine for an awfully long time, yeah. actually. Yeah. So, um, you late 80s, early 90s? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a bit like Trigger's Broom. It doesn't have any of the original components in it. It's yeah. been sort of, you know, everything's been changed, you know, over and over again. Yeah. And it's fairly close to, yeah. to modern spec. And I, I think I got mine about well in the late eighties, I think as well. Yes. Um, and I really like mine. And the fact that I don't have one doesn't mean I don't like them anymore. I'd quite like another one actually yeah. to yeah. add, add you know, to my collection of turntables. It's been uh, really nice listening to this yeah. one, actually, yeah. hasn't it? And, yeah. and this, the 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 magic uh, with the J and the K is the um, is the en- dare I say? Can I say entry level when it's yeah. three and a half thousand pounds? Yeah. 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 Uh, but I mean, it is their entry level LP12. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, so both really enjoyed. Well, I'm speaking for you, but I certainly really enjoyed listening to it. Yeah. Um, it was great to hear. Um, and you know, what I like is that it's retained a lot of the characters and the characteristics which we had from the original LP12. So for me, it's still got that sort of lovely sort of warmish sound. Um, I, I, I think it would be reasonable to say there are more detailed turntables in the world. Yep. Um, but I like what it does, and I think you know, it does it does its job really, really well. Um, and I think even if you sort of came from a background of liking, you know, say for example, Gyrodex or Roxanne's, yep, you would still appreciate this, you know, the LP12 because because it's still you know by anybody's standards a great turntable. Yeah, I mean, I think um, uh, Ivor Tiefenbrunn once. Uh, said to me um, when I was asking about all the different upgrade options uh, with the LP12 and you know the Valhalla and Nirvana and Circus and all that stuff yes um, I think he said you know he sort of saw the LP12 as a kind of Porsche 911 you know yeah so it, it, it's basically the same but different you know as it's got out, gone through the years um, but the, the concept is the same and the, the, the sort of uh, in, in the case of the Porsche you know it's it's like a rear mid-engine sports car isn't it yep. and, and it has a certain handling characteristic that makes it unique and different to a yes. Lotus Esprit or whatever and and I think you know that's a good metaphor because the LP12 has its own characteristics that makes it different to a Michel Gyrodek or whatever else uh, you know the Roxanne or the Pink Triangle or whatever. It's a brilliant analogy yeah. especially yeah. as the early 911s had a a reputation of sort of you know driving them wrongly you'd end up in a tree yeah and so they had to sort of use loads and loads of electronic trickery to make it you know keep you alive then not quite so dramatically but the lp12 is quite the same isn't it so the original lp12 had its flaws yeah and they've sort of thrown lots and lots of, of goodies and gadgets at it over the years to try and uh, eliminate the flaws and end up with as close to a perfect turntable yeah. as they could well the, i mean interestingly the the uh, yes, Lynn have thrown electronic trickery at the LP12. For example, the Lingo power supply. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as we shall talk about later, um, this LP12 doesn't have that. No. Um, no. And it doesn't have the um, uh, the Valhalla uh, power board either, does it? No, no. Um, no. So, uh, we'll, but we'll come to that. We'll come to that later. But to me, the interesting thing is that the Magic LP12 has a lot of big structural chassis changes compared to the LP12s that you and I bought in the in, in the late 80s. Yes. Um, and and it, it goes through m- many of the criticisms that were made of the deck at the time. Yes. Um, and, and addresses them. So you've got the sort of original LP12, but with some of the, uh, well, pretty much all the bugs ironed out I think um, mm. and then that's that costs £3,450 with a tone arm and cartridge so what I'm getting at here is that it could appeal to two types of buyer so it could appeal to the you and me type of buyer who've got a late 80s LP12 mm-hmm. 
we haven't even maybe got a circus bearing upgrade, which was the early 90s, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. And it was yeah. 500 quid in the early 90s. Yes. Um, so this has the new uh, carousel uh, bearing. Um, which is the best one they do, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's the, the top best. of the range bearing. Exactly. There. It's the best yeah. ever bearing they've done. And it, I think it's about 800 quid by itself, that kind of money. I'm sure. Um, so this has all the nice bits. It's got a... Um, uh, um, a, a magic aluminium subchassis. Uh, again, the original earlier Linz had a pressed steel subchassis, mm -hmm. um, and it was widely criticised. The deck was widely criticised for that because decks like the Haybrook TT2 that came out in the early '80s, which looked very similar to the LP12, had aluminium subchassis. You know, even back then, it's not like it was a a new thing. Um, so having the aluminium such as is great and that's standard uh, now on the LP12 Magic and all new LP12s uh, and it's got an aluminium baseboard as well and again you know the kind of Lin haters always used to knock the LP12 for uh, having a kind of bit of plywood und underneath you know um, so it's not like they've just given it a sort of quick uh, soup, soup up and uh, you know they've, they've really got into the it's sort of the, the gubbins of the turntable and and put new new bits which have vastly improved over the old bits yeah and and they've, they've done something really or a couple of things they're really clever haven't they and they're one of them is the price point um and two is that upgrade path yeah so because you've got this this uh this carousel bearing isn't it yeah it's it the latest one yeah um because you've got like the, the best bearing you can get yeah then you can start with the entry level in and you've got a good basis for success a platform for upgrade haven't you all the way exactly through. Um, and the price points are interesting yeah. because if you want to upgrade from here, then you're talking about quite a big chunk of money for the select, isn't it? Which yeah. is the next one up, which is so ten thousand pounds ish, something like that. Ten and a half. Ten and a half yeah. thousand. Yeah. Um, and then okay, you get all the things in that which you'd probably want to upgrade this to. So you get the Lingo power supply, you get a better tone arm, you yeah. get a moving air coil cartridge. Yeah. You know, and all the things which would you go from there. So, yeah. so I think you have to be, if you're going to buy an LP12 these days, I think you have to be really careful as to your choice. You know, and I think I think your choices are one of two: either you buy this and you stick, yeah. you go right, that's it. I'm spending yeah. my, my, my three and a bit thousand, yeah. um, and I'm I'm staying with the magic, or you save your pennies and you go for the for the snacks. Yeah. Well, you might think that. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, if it was me, so if I had. Um, a, um, if I had uh, my late 80s LP12 um, and I hadn't done anything to it for a long time, um, the cost of getting all these new bits and pieces would probably take me up to pretty much the cost of a new Magic LP12. Yes, yeah. So firstly, I would buy a new Magic LP12 and uh, sell my old deck. And, uh, you know, LP12s command a lot of money secondhand. They're, they're mm. justifiably mm. popular. Yes. Um, so, you know, I would then end up with a very later spec deck. Um, now, I might, you know, in the case of my deck, I had an, an, e, uh, sorry, an ITOC 3 on it the last time I had, I had that deck. So I'd want to put that ITOC 3 on my Magic LP12, yes, you know, okay, um, yeah. and take the, uh, take the crane tone arm off. And we'll talk about that tone arm in a minute. And obviously I put my own cartridge uh, that I was using at the time, which... Probably was an Audio Technica AT thirty three E or something. Yeah. Um, but then we've still got the issue of of the power supply, haven't we? Yeah. The magic power supply. Yeah. And I mean, do you think that's the weak point on this package? I I, I do I yeah. do and and also I think it's the the weakest looking point because it, it leads you to that the the old sort of. The old style rocker switch, almost, yeah. which was in yeah. the the very early LP12. Well, you, your very first LP12 had that, uh, had that, that rocker switch, switch. Had that rocker switch. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. red, was the red it. switch, yeah. wasn't it? And it was either on or off. Yeah. There's no yeah. with this. You know, you've got thirty three and a third or nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's no sort of forty five. Uh, there's no lingo this. style hold hold it down for a no, while and it goes no, up to forty five. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, okay, is what it is. But yeah, that will be the first thing to go. I mean, yeah. not even it's even I mean, pre Valhalla sort of thing. This isn't yeah. it. So I think the power supply because that's what Lim would say as well. I'm sure they'd agree with me here. You know, you, you start with the, the closer to the 
to the, the, the turntable as possible and sort of work away. So, yeah. you know, bearing's probably the most important bit, yeah. arguably. Then, Absolutely. Then the carousel bearing, definitely. Then the power supply. Well, and the, the the new sub chassis as well, which is great to have, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know? yeah. To- and then, yeah. Then tone arm, then, then tone cartridge. Arm cartridge. Yeah. yeah. And then, then move down from there. Yeah. So, so I think that would be the logical upgrade path. Yeah. And actually, you know, maybe you're absolutely right. So maybe the idea is you go for the magic and you upgrade to the, to the, the lingo as well. Yeah, Which is what fourteen hundred pounds, something like 1450 that. Fourteen fifty at the moment. Fourteen fifty. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so that's that's probably your sensible part. Yeah, and then five thousand, and you've got a, you know, brilliant turntable combination. Yes, and and you know, people will go, oh, well, I bought my LP twelve for two hundred ninety eight pounds in yes. nineteen eighty three. Yeah, yeah, and it's now three thousand four hundred and fifty. You know, what a rip off. Yes. Um, but firstly, this package gives you the tone arm and cartridge, yeah, um, yeah. which is you know, and they, they are they are perfectly decent. Uh, they're nowhere near as good as what the LP12 can, no. you know, can can make the most of. Yes, um, but they're they're perfectly good starter cartridges, and they're certainly better. Again, let's not get too rose tinted. So I my first LP12 had a basic LVX plus mm-hmm. uh, with basic cartridge, which was an Audio Technica AT93 rebadged yes. with a spherical stylus. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, and you, I think your, you did you have the basic LVV, the S shaped? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. That's what mine so, came with. Yeah, yeah. and and, um, the, and, and, a, yeah. and a Supex. Um, yeah. uh, SM one SMM one hundred. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that was a decent um, cartridge, that but was really cool. The point it is, a, it was a Stilton edition. Yeah, <laughs> a, yeah. Cheesy, uh, cheesy sound. <laughs> it looked like a cheese. Yeah, it's a strange, uh, strange name for a cartridge. But yes. uh, but anyway, the, the the point is, is that um, the LV, the basic LVV, and the basic LVX and LVX Plus that we were, you know, our were, were our first introduction to Lin Tone Arms weren't very good no compared to no. the crane tone arm which comes uh, on the um the, the crane uh, feels yeah. very solidly built yeah indeed it, it seems to do a really really good job and and the, the, the moving magnet cartridge it comes with um again you know sounds pretty sweet works yeah. really nicely they yeah. work nicely together yeah. yeah um without a doubt so that they're, they're certainly you know um they may be more expensive but they're better than the LVX uh, and, and basic uh, of, of you know back in the good old days as it were yes um, and of course the LP12 itself is a much more advanced turntable now yeah. uh, in terms of its over- overall engineering um, I think um, than uh, you know the ones that we were we, we had uh, you know, back in the day so, yeah absolutely um, absolutely and, yeah. and I think you know you can kind of take that to the nth degree because the the climax LP12 is um, they're, they're top of the range right yeah. now. Is 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 kind of mega bucks, isn't it? Is it twenty twenty three twenty three thousand pounds? Yeah, um, you know, which is quite serious. But go, just to go back to what I think you've made a really good point is, you know, the LP twelve is capable of handling an awful lot more yeah. than the than the basic yeah. package, which is in the Magic. So yeah. you know, it can cope with the with the you know the new Ecos tone arm beautifully and the. The, the sort of Lyra rebadge cartridges beautifully and um, you know I'm sure get an excellent sound I think that's one of the things we'll have to do is have a listen to that yeah. IMAX turntable reluctantly um, I might uh, you know, uh, just and, for, for and purely for work reasons and see what it likes yeah. see what it's like um, oh, one thing which, which we haven't mentioned is in the in the magic and and um, and you're gonna you're gonna take the mickey out of me here um, I didn't realize there were there were different finishes so when I when I because I think it's about two or three hundred pounds for for a different for a different finish. Yeah. So when I unboxed it, it was the same color as your shirt, <laughs> um, and I'm sure you had a Honda the same color as that. Once I as might well. have done. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's this sort of turquoise yeah. um, uh, color, and and I actually thought it was some kind of wrapping around the turntable, but it was actually the. <laughs> you see, go <come> on. <laughs> well, this is my my you know uh, Ma- David Price shirt magic uh, edition. Yes, costs three hundred pounds um, upgrade yeah. from that, and it's a great color, I think. Yes, so, uh, it was, I just if I, I th- do say so myself. I like the fact that I thought it was yeah. really cool that, yeah. that that Lynn are doing this yeah. um, with these with these these different finishes. Do you think my shirt's cool, Mike? I like your shirt. Thank very you much. very much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, clashes with with the Lynn, but um, <laughs> but I like. Um, uh, so so back in our day, yeah, uh, you could get um, Aphromosia, yep, 
whatever that was african uh, some kind of african rosewood no that wasn't rosewood it was, no, no, it was some sort of african it was wood. like it was like lighter yeah. than walnut wasn't yeah. it yeah and it was um, fluted wasn't it it was fluted yeah. you could get you could get walnut you could yeah. get black yeah um so they were your three rosewood could fish. you get rosewood you had to you had to you had, it was a very special uh, limited edition finish i um, never saw one uh, very special limited finish you had to take either tea from them out for dinner Did to you? be able to get a rosewood uh, lp12 yeah is that how you Do got you, yours it's like? how I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly um it's not like you to have rare and special <laughs> things that you can't get very easily so it's well see this is the the thing it, mine is like triggers broom as i said earlier but except for the plinth i haven't changed the plinth because it's just yeah. too too gorgeous to get rid of it's proper yeah probably probably you know loads of african rainforests have done well, I, can I shouldn't be boasting about this i can so. i've got some touch-up paint from my old honda i can yeah. respray it in this color if you like Mike. i wonder if you could wrap it so. like you come with a car, could wrap it in turquoise i've got so. some uh, some you know kind of wet and dry in, in the car boot I, we could sand that down no problem and we'll uh, we'll nip down to halfords oh gosh it's uh no it, anyway i was i was very impressed with this and i think i would actually yeah. spend the extra couple of hundred quid yeah, uh, to get a funky finish because it yeah. it's really gorgeously done as well. It looks looks amazing. It, it, it looks does really yeah. smart. So so yeah, that would be my top tips. Yeah, don't, don't do the lingo. Get the get the get the turquoise <laughs> one. So yeah, um, and anyway, my wife loves it as well. She thought it's a great color. Yeah, lounge, so just a bit different to the normal sort of hi-fi stuff that we bring home. And it, yeah, so it looks very generic. It was nice yeah. to see something that stood out a bit. It was a bit yeah. of a party piece. Yeah, um, but sound wise, yeah, you know, great. Um, that Lin sound, as I said earlier, yeah. uh, stirring slightly on the warmth side works well with my system, obviously, because I've got my exposure amps and my isobaric, so it should fit in like hand in glove. And um, yeah. sounded great. Yeah. You know, maybe if you had a little bit more of an analytical system, maybe not so much. Maybe you better off with a gyro deck, or you know, other turntables are available. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think um, so. I think. I'll, how can I put this? So. For a long time, Lin LP12s were kind of uh, um, in the doldrums as far as the sort of general um, uh, sort of perception of them were. And I think that was on the rebound from when they were the best turntable in the world, if yes. you believed uh, any of the UK hi-fi magazines. You know, literally nothing else ever made ever even came close. That was certainly in the, in the late 70s, early 80s, mid 80s, maybe even late 80s. So much of the UK hi-fi press was just Lin mad, weren't they? They were. LP12 they were. mad. Yes. And then the sort of 90s, there was almost kind of rebound where, you know, uh, especially online on some of the forums, you know, uh, and a lot of people sort of um, being quite unpleasant to the deck um, and saying it was soggy and it, it didn't image and it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Um, and I think the, the, you know, the whole point is that, that it was... You know, it's it was never the best deck in the world, but it it was always a lovely deck to listen to. Yes. Um, yeah. Um. Uh, in its own way, and yeah. you know, just like sort of classic sports cars, we were talking about. They are they are not sort of the best all rounders in the world, are they? But they have no. charm in, in their own way that makes them really attractive and nice to live with. Yes. Know? Yeah. Uh, and and the yeah. the nine eleven analogy holds up to yeah. all of that as well, doesn't yeah, it? Because yeah. the Elpidor is yeah. like the nine eleven yeah. of the car world. Yeah. Yeah. Other people might yeah. prefer a Ferrari or a Lambo. Yeah. But the Porsche is pretty solid, you know, for day to day use. Yes, and, and the so. interesting thing to me is that Lynn have updated the LP12 now, so the latest range, uh, which the Magic is the entry level, um, you know, is it addresses so many of those complaints that mm. people made, you know, in in the nineties and two thousands. Um, so it really does sound very good by any standards, even uh, with the ma in, in Magic basic Magic spec. Um, uh, but it's still it's still got that kind of nice Lin sort of subtle musicality to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that absolutely. makes it nice to listen to. I I, I yeah. really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Yeah. Um, you know, and and it works with all sorts yeah. of type of music. Yeah. You know, it's it's pretty. It's it, just pretty cool. Across it the board. shuffles along and has a good time with it music, really does. doesn't it? Yeah. And um, and you know, going back to Ivo, you know, he used to say. Okay, you might look at them as sort of standard cliches, but you know, if you can tap your foot along to the bass line and all that sort of stuff, and you can with it, you, you can. really can, it's, yeah. And and you know, the 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 classic um, 
uh, you know, hi-fi rubbish word is musicality. Yeah. Um, but it's a really musical turntable. Yeah. You really enjoy yeah. the music, listening to it. And you and and that for me, the secret to that is you tend not to listen to the hi-fi. You actually listen to the song. Yeah. And that is a bit of an acid test. Isn't yeah. It? And it does that beautifully. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. And it also, um, you know, criticisms about its stereo imaging. I think it's still not as good as a Michelle Jaradec or Orb. But it, it images way better, I think, than it used to. It's got a sure. much more solid central image with the sort of magic uh, 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 um, sort of era mods, you know, with the carousel bearing. Yeah, that makes a big um, difference. And, and the sub chassis and Absolutely. stuff. Um, Absolutely. So it sounds, you know, it, it sounds much more. Uh, uh, it's a much better all rounder, I would say. I'm glad they've given the, the carousel bearing in there because, you know, you wouldn't. You, I think that's terrific of them yeah. because it would be a bit cheap. I think if they'd given you a substandard bearing and the other two turntables had had you yeah. know, the top of the range yeah. one. Um, so I think our advice here, if I'm getting it right, is yeah, buy the Magic LP12, save your pennies towards uh, the the Lingo power supply because yeah. that yeah. would be a great upgrade. Yeah, and you're kind of then halfway between the the halfway to the select yeah um and you've got Which a pretty is, decent turntable you center. have and and also you, you know you don't have to keep the tone on um so uh you can all you could go for a lin ecos if you want another uh another arm that works very well is the audio origami pu7 mm. um which is uh, a, a kind of re re uh, engineered version of the original syrinx, the syrinx. pu3 yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a, a, a great really, arm in its day. Really good tone. Yeah, really yeah. good tone arm. Uh, yeah. uh, some of the LP12 cognoscenti in the early '80s thought the Strinx was better than the uh, than the uh, you know Itok, didn't they? Yeah, uh, interesting. And, well, uh, I, well, yeah. I got an arm which I thought was better than the Ecos. Yeah, uh, on mine, which yeah. maybe we can save for another riff. But yes, um, um, made by a company in Salisbury. It's a wibbly wobbly, uh, a wibbly thing. wobbly Salisbury based tone arm. Yeah, yeah which so, we won't say no more. Yeah, um, we should we should do the difficult thing and, and try and rate this. Uh, hi fi riffometer out yep. of out of ten, what do you think? What do you reckon? So I'm gonna give it nine. Okay. Um, okay. May, yeah, so eight and a half to nine because you know, if only it had a kind of uh, Valhalla type uh, electronic power supply, it would be it would be, you know, a, a notch up I think better than it is, but still yeah. it's it's not it's not you know, in any way bad in terms of speed stability now. But um it's that yeah. old rocker thing puts me right yeah. off. It, I would yeah. have to spend the money yeah. and get the lingo. Yeah. So for me, I'm only going to give it an eight Okay. Uh, because yeah. I know it's going to cost me another £1,400 buying a lingo on top of it. Yeah. But then I think for 5000 I've got a great setup. Uh, it, yeah, I mean, it's a very capable turntable for yeah. five grand with an arm and cartridge thrown in. Absolutely. Um, and you don't yeah. have to buy the lingo. You could spend three, three and a half and, uh, and not get the lingo and put up with a rocker switch. Yeah, you wouldn't know, would you get rid of the rocker switch? <laughs> well, you wouldn't, Mike, but uh, <laughs> maybe some people, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> They're not as fuss fussy as you, are they? So. And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, brilliant. Well, look, I've really enjoyed listening to the Lynn again, and that's been great. And, yeah. and, and thank you, everybody, for watching this episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff, and we'll see you at the very next one. Thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.